<laughs> I'm so excited. I'm about to watch one of my favorite horror show hosts, Lord Blood Raw, and his nerve-wracking theater. <laughs> but I have a bonus. I can watch it in 8D. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, come join me and my friends, won't you? <laughs> Lord Blood Raw. 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 <laughs> Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, one, fire. My lords and ladies, geeks, geekerellas, geekulas, and geekeritas, I am Lord Bloodraw, and this is Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater. And for many, being stranded on a remote island with a group of beautiful showgirls would be a lovely fantasy. Sorry. But uh, for our group in tonight's movie, that same scenario becomes a waking nightmare. Ha <laughs> ha! Tonight, from Germany, from 1960, it's the silly, sexist exploitation shocker, Horrors of Spider Island. Ha <laughs> ha! Now, this movie is very much a Euro trash product of its time, and it's had many different incarnations throughout its long life. For instance, the original German title was Ein Toterhing im Netz, The Body in the Web, and it uh, contained quite a few nude scenes. So many, in fact, that when it was finally released in the U.S. in 1962, it was retitled It's Hot in Paradise. <laughs> then three years later, all the nude scenes were cut out and was once again re-released as the film we're about to see tonight, Horrors of Spider Island. Because after all, this is a family show. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, my lords and ladies, without further ado, I give to you Dancers in Danger on an isolated island being stalked by a sinister spider. Ha <laughs> ha! Here is Horrors of Spider Island.
south of Malaya. Population approximately 550,000. University, shipbuilding, important seaport. Doesn't it say anything about the 32 nightclubs there? Have you already worked down in Singapore? Not to work. However, I once had a friend, an oil sheik. He took me with him down there. He was quite a guy. Those are the guys that run around in turbans, aren't they? <laughs> Listen, honey, when they take those turbans up, they're just like any other man. Got a light. Uh. Looking forward to going to Singapore? Mm, I don't really care where I dance, as long as the pay's good. <laughs> him now. Hi. Hi. I've already been to Singapore. And you look like it. Oh, <laughs> Hello, Gary. Hi, Georgie. You're looking prettier every day. How in the world are you doing? Mike. Yeah? Have you told the girls what this is all about? Sure, Gary. A tour for a dancing troupe. First engagement, Singapore. I have 12 of them here to pick from. Okay, Georgia. Let the girls in. We don't have much time. All right, if we start now, Mr. Blackwood. Of course. Oh, but one at a time, please. Okay. May? Smile, will you? How do you do? That's Mr. Webster, the manager. And uh, this is May. She's the finest dancer in town. What was your last engagement? With the Coquettes, one year. Ah, uh, one of the finest. Hmm, legs? Pardon me? Mr. Webster would like to look at your legs. Oh, sure. Thank you, you're hired. Please wait outside. Oh, thank you. Hmm, May, Coquettes. And this is Rhonda Hunter. Dancer? Not really. But I picked things up real fast. Hmm. Thank you. We're looking for dancers. But what's that got to do with Singapore? Come on, come on honey. Don't hold us up. Babs? This is Babs. Her legs are worth their weight in gold. Can those golden legs also dance? I was solo dancer in the Apollo Varieties. And why did you leave there? Oh, the boss really went for her, but his wife thought otherwise. All right, you can work with us, as long as you don't have any affairs. Mr. Webster doesn't tolerate any fooling around. I had all the boys I can take. Come on. Carolyn. This little one's from the National Ballet. Could you dance a little bit for us? Glad to. Would you put this one on for me? Sure. Let's have a look. wonderfully. But I'm afraid ballet is not what we're looking for. Mm. Don't be sad, honey. I tell you what, uh, come in again tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah, I've got something else for you. Oh, thanks. All right. Thanks. Here are Gladys and Doreen. I told you to let them in separately. These babes have been working from the start as a duo number. And we would very much like to stay together, if possible. On this tour, you'll be dancing with other girls. That doesn't matter, as long as we get to go overseas. All right, you can both work with us. Please send the next one in. Yeah. Thank you. See you. Linda. 
Hello there. Hmm. You're a stripper? At times. Didn't I see you work the Sapphire Club last month? How observant of you. How come you quit that place? The boss wanted to. I didn't. Oh, are you always so picky unish? That depends on the boss. Boss, shall I dance for you? It's not necessary. You're hired. Wait outside. Okay. Next girl, please. My name is Nellie Hastings. A new one. I haven't seen her work yet, but she's always been with good troops. Let's see her dance. Wait outside. So, Mr. Blackwood has supplied all the girls we need. Fine, Georgia. Uh, go and tell the girls when costume and dance rehearsals will start. Will you please? Okay. All right. Listen, Gary, I thought you were the boss. But you let Georgia select all the girls. I select all the girls. You? But you didn't say a word. Why should I? I have a little trick. When I keep my legs apart like so, it means I'm not interested. When I cross them like this, ah, then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you always were a crazy guy. When do things get underway? Oh, ten days. Ten days? Well, then, have a good trip. Thank you. And so all of our victims, uh, I mean, all of our dancers, have been chosen, and soon they'll be winging their way to Singapore. Oh, and um, by the way, just to explain this. Hmm. You're a stripper? At times. You see, kids, besides being a dancer, she also worked as a stripper. And a stripper is someone who strips the old paint off of buildings and houses before the new paint is put on, you know. And she took her clothes off because, well, who wants old paint all over their clothes, right? Right. You're welcome, parents. We'll be right back. From the depths of hell comes the Devil's Messenger, starring the master of mystery, Lon Chaney, and Karen Cannon. If you leave my message, you'd have to go back. Up there. Oh, I can't. I won't go back. You deliver that to a Mr. Donald Powell. Don't be afraid of me. The Devil's Messenger delivers gifts from hell, turning man into a ravaging feast. I took a picture of that old farmhouse. There's nobody in the picture. You saw it. Was there anybody in it? No, there wasn't. Somebody has come out of that house, and they're coming toward me. Back from the dead, his lovely victim seeks revenge for her horrible death at the hands of a man driven mad by a gift from hell. Trapped in her icy tomb until the devil's messenger exposed her nakedness in her crystal prison. Now let's get down to here. She becomes the object of a scientist's lust. His consuming desire for her drives him to commit murder to keep her for himself. Not since he received the apple have gifts inflicted such unnatural consequences. Tonight at midnight, you will be dead. Just how do you intend to kill me? I have no idea. I don't even know you. Crystal ball foreshadows June. For it is the plaything of the devil. And only he can change the events it foresees. <laughs> you must see what the devil's messenger has in store for you. 
as we return to Horrors of Spider Island. Our dance troupe is leaving for the big show in Singapore. It looks like good weather and all systems are go. What could possibly go wrong? Pacific Ocean near Honolulu. Altitude is 15,000 feet. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Clipper 247, Clipper 247. We are 9,000 feet losing altitude. Number two engine burning. Prop feathered, attempting emergency landing. Present position, it's... Repeat your position. Repeat your position. Damn, I can't pick him up anymore. Clipper 247. No, Mr. Hastings, I can only repeat, there's absolutely no reason yet to fear the worst. Until now, we only know that the plane caught fire and that we've lost radio contact. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know immediately, as soon as I hear something new. Blackwood Agency. No, Mr. Alberts, I don't have any further information. But of course there's a search party out there. I tell you, rescuers are looking all over for them. There's still hope, even after four days. Yes? I'll call you as soon as I hear something new. driving us all nuts. What? Just one swallow. No more today. Tomorrow you'll get another ration. Gary? Give me some water. Who do you think you are? The fifth night. We can't hold out much longer. You're starting that too, Georgia? A ship has to go by here sometime. Or we've got to at least see some land. Water. Please give me water. Where there are birds, there must be land. Are you crazy? Give that to me. Look at there, Gary. Over there. Land. 
There's land. Help me paddle. We've got to make it. Paddle with your hands. Don't stop now. We'll make it. It's not far now. Then we'll be safe. <laughs> Roger, darling. to me. Something deep down inside of my prana. Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. You're creative. Beatniks at their bawdiest. The creative urge at its most primitive. I'm deeply moved. 
and I shall compose a poem. Love is art. Art is love. It's the weirdest and the wildest. I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married to you. Okay, banga banga. Since when are you talking native language? I just started today. Well, what do you say? What do you say? I don't even know what I said. and Sammy Petrillo turn an island paradise into the zaniest madhouse in the seven seas. Charlita puts a gleam in Duke Mitchell's eyes. Your smile only added life to your masquerade. Muriel Landers puts the whammy on Sammy. Sammy! Run for your life! Go on, get out of here, run for your life. Ramona, the romantic chimp, takes off on a romantic chase of her own. Strange, but interesting. Really think so? Mm. What a charming compliment. Bella Lugosi finds the perfect subject to turn a gorilla into a goop and versa visa. <laughs> What are, you, what are you trying to tell me? I, I don't understand a way. What, what, what am I, dumb or something? Uh, don't, don't answer that. Now look, Duke Mitchell. I'm running this game, you understand? And I'll talk back. Yeah, now put it on, because we got to get out that door. <laughs> Now back to Horrors of Spider Island, as our cavorting castaways have reached a tropical island paradise. And, according to Gilligan's Guide to Tropical Island Survival, it's time to start making huts, baking banana cream pies, and making a radio out of two coconuts and a ballpoint pen. Oh, and soon the guest stars will be coming! The Broadway producer, the Wild 60s surf band, the mad scientist... Wow. It sounds like being stranded on a tropical island is a lot of fun. Let's see how it works out for them. you're drinking their runoff, right? You may want to get closer where the fresh stuff is. Okay, girls, that's enough. Let's go and have a look around. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Georgia. Ready? Let's go. Good. Feeling better now? Don't like being Thanks. 
Heels are too high for here. Hey, eat your scarf. Okay, baby. Coming? Oh, my. Ouch. Ouch. Careful, girls. Oh, wait, French. Oh, God. Listen, what a strange silence. Well, let's keep going. All right. Yeah, I'm on the way. Oh, I wonder how much further we're going to have to go. Explain, uh, right? What do you think, dear? Huh? Ouch, my shoe. Oh, oh, this way, it's not very good for you. Mm -hmm. Gary, look what I just found. What? Oh. A hammer. There must be someone on this island. Really? A hammer with a long handle. It must be for the purpose of excavating some sort of metal. Most probably uranium. Can you eat that yet? <laughs> yeah, you can try it. Come on, let's go and find out. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, oh, really? nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, Oh, Look. Come here. Look. A cabin. Oh. <laughs> Let's get out of here. A dead man in a huge web. Professor, when he made the last entry in the diary, he didn't know how horribly he would die. Well, his discovery of the uranium deposits didn't help him any, even if it does represent a tremendous fortune. We must keep it from the girls that Professor Green had a premonition of his fate. You see here, in the last paragraph, he says he thought something terrible was going to happen. He just felt the danger. I wonder where that peculiar hissing came from that he always heard. Oh, Gary, I'm terribly scared. I'm so afraid. Don't worry, Georgia. As long as I'm around, nothing will happen to you. I promise. Hi, Georgia. I'm hungry. I've made something for you to eat. Lucky there were some canned goods here. Mmm, <clears throat> food. It must have been a really gigantic spider to be able to spin such a huge web. Maybe there are more of them. <gasps> we found the professor's trunk full of stuff. They'll certainly be useful. One, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. If we divide the provisions up carefully, they should last for a month. What did you say, Georgia? A month? Do you really think we'll be here a whole month? I don't know. We have to go tomorrow to the highest cliff and light a smoke signal to try and attract a ship. 10, 11, 12. Give me that shirt. No, it belongs to me. After all, I found it. But my dress is in worse shape than yours. No, I want to have it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me. Stop that fighting. Give me that shirt. Georgia? Thanks, Gary. 
I suppose we could have guessed that Georgia would be getting it. Haven't you ever noticed that Gary Pampers... Are... What's this? Where did you get the pullover? I found it here if you don't have anything against huh. it. Now stop it or I'll take care of both of you. Give me something to drink, Douglas. Mm -hmm. Take it easy, Gary. We're all a little nervous. It's really no wonder. Uh, don't you think I'd rather be in a bar in Singapore with a nice cold drink than to be on this godforsaken place? <laughs> Look, drinking this horrible stuff. Ugh. <laughs> Darn heat. Look out, will you? Stop making so much noise. If you don't like it, you can do the dishes. Or do you think I'm doing this for my own pleasure? Stop blowing your top and dry up, will you? <sighs> I simply can't stand this frightful heat any longer. Someplace else. I want to sleep. I sure hope you don't lose your lipstick. You'd hardly be able to get along on this island without it. I'm through. It's about time. Now I'll shower. Give it here. Come on. Come on, girls. Let's go to sleep. I'm going to sleep outside. Night. Me too. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Kate. Professor's revolver. Get some sleep, Gary. I can't. I think I'll go out for a little walk. But don't worry. I'll be back very shortly. <laughs> doing anymore. <laughs> yes, poor Gary's gone delirious with the heat. That's why he was kissing that girl. It was the heat. I mean, why else would he be kissing that girl? The heat. For 
two million years in these subterranean caves, a creature of superhuman evil was entombed in a wall of ice, waiting to be free, waiting to live again. Travel with us on a journey into a world where nightmare becomes reality. Telling me that an ape that lived two million years ago got onto that crate, killed the baggage man, and put him in there. Yes, I am. It's alive. It must be. Travel with us, if you dare, on the Horror Express. search the train and find it, whatever it is, and destroy it. But if it's alive... I want this kept quiet. I don't want to panic the passengers. The malignant power of this creature is indestructible, transferring its force from mind to mind, from body to body. Beast is not dead. I put four bullets into him. You think evil can be killed with bullets? Satan leaves. The animal that you shot was only the host. It's alive in someone on this train. You saw his eyes. One look at them and you're dead. Anything that moves near that door, kill it. <laughs> Run, run for your life. Hide, but you can't escape. No one can stop the fury and the terror of the Horror Express. I'm going, if you're not going with me, I'm going along. Stay 
here. Don't leave us alone. You won't find Gary. Ah! Oh, just leave everything as it is. We must find Gary. Babs and Ann, you go in that direction. Where in the world is Kate? Here, Georgia. You two go in that direction. Kate and May will go along with me. Hurry up. What about me? You, you remain here and put things in order while we're gone. Huh. Hey, Gary! Would you quit that whistling? You're making me nervous. I'm not afraid when I whistle. <laughs> Here. Did you hear anything? No. But there's something moving there. I don't hear anything. <laughs> Gary! Hey, Gladys! Don't leave me alone. Then hurry up. Gary! Gary! strangled. The spider. <laughs> Anne. Anne. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, Georgia, the professor's been killed. Gary's disappeared, and now we've just buried Linda. Which one of us is going to be next? I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want Anne. to die. Anne. Now stop it, will you? Stop it before you drive us all crazy. Not me. Stop not it. me. And I tell you, they'll never find us. Never. But I'm sure the police are moving heaven and hell to find us, honey. The police? The cops I know. If they catch you speeding a little bit or find you drunk, they send you right off to the cooler. But you just let somebody get lost and they won't lift a finger. Do you believe that they'll go running around for a few broads who are lost? But how are they to know huh? that we've been rescued and on this little island? Rescued? Who's been rescued? We, perhaps? Show me the island. Show me where does it lie in the ocean. Show it to me. By the time they find us, we'll all be dead. You, you and you, one after the other. Back. Get a hold of yourself. You're only getting all the girls worked up. 
Well, if it isn't Miss Georgia, of all people, it has to be you. Who has Gary and Linda on her conscience? Who? Babs, do you know what you're saying? Exactly. Through your jealousy. You should never have left Linda alone in the cabin. Shut up, will you? What can Georgia do about Linda's death? Take your hands off me, or I'll break your arm. Just you try that, baby. Take that. Oh. Go see that spider venom works fast, doesn't it? So now what? He's a weird spider? Is he going to start spinning webs? And where will he spin them from? Ew. First spaceship on Venus. You are there with eight international astronauts, seven men and a woman taking off on the most exciting, nerve-shattering journey in the history of man. You are there, braving the staggering shower of meteorites. You are there when the magic of the giant motion picture screen takes you 36 million miles into outer space. There's never been anything like this before, in fact or fiction. First spaceship on Venus. Now back to Horrors of Spider Island, as our unfriendly neighborhood Spider-Man is making life rough for our feuding survivors. Let's see if their situation has improved any. the ship getting any closer? I don't know. Come on, throw it on. Yeah, should I get some more? No, no, that's enough. That's giving enough smoke. They must see us. They can't just leave us here. <gasps> Hello? Hello? Stop all that screaming, Anne. You're driving me crazy. Let me go. Hello? Take us with you. Hello? We're over here. Please don't forget us. Yell with me. They must hear us. Hello, hello there. Take us with you. May, it sailed right by. It sailed by. We'll never get home now. Never again. 28 days. 28 long days and nights. Nobody even knows we're here. And today a ship sails right by us. Our rescue so close. And May. Oh, Georgia, a ship. There, a ship. Oh, it's gone. How terrible. And we only have enough food left for three days. Anne, Anne. Come on back. 
Come on. Start unloading. I'll take the oars up. Okay, Bob. What are you carrying the oars so far away for? Afraid the mermaid will steal our boat? Uh, don't talk to me about women on this godforsaken island. Should have taken one along as part of your ration. I wanted to, but it wasn't approved. Tough. <clears throat> Hey, come on over here and give me a hand, will you? Okay, I'm coming. Take it easy. Easy now. Easy, that is. Boy, that junk is heavy. Oh. Bob, you know, I'm sort of glad the professor picked us out to help him with his work, even though it's lonely over here. Give me some whiskey. <clears throat> there aren't any chicks, then at least some whiskey. You only think about whiskey and women. <laughs> you better change or you'll never get any place. Get off my back. I'm sick of your preaching. Take the professor, for example. Uh, that guy's always been lucky. Well, we explore all sorts of islands for six months. He comes with us once and finds the stuff. And of all places on this miserable oh, island. Out. Stop grumbling, will ya? Uh, <laughs> go on. I'll go and look for the professor now. Okay. Get on out of here, will you? In the meantime, I'll unload. And uh, have fun. Yeah, sure.
But where is Gary? Please, Georgia, let's go. I'm so afraid. Perhaps there are more spiders around. Come and sit with me. What do you want from me? Well, give you three guesses. I was going to ask you for the time. spider dead it was shot with the professor's own revolver and gary's bracelet was laying there beside it what's that noise that's him get back quiet hands up hmm? stop or i'll shoot hey hello baby hands up hmm? anything you wish Get going into the cabin. What a coincidence. That's where I wanted to go. I said get going. Mm. All righty. I think he's handsome. He doesn't look so terrible. They're the really dangerous ones. Too bad. Okay, turn around. Mm -hmm. Where's Gladys? What did you do with her? Let me speak to him. Where is Gladys? Gladys? <laughs> no idea. I don't know the young lady, unfortunately. We just got here, down on the lagoon. You see, Georgia? Where we were swimming. And that's where Gladys disappeared. On the lagoon? Ah! <laughs> don't laugh. You'll be sorry about that. Oh, I don't know. Just look at what's coming down the path. <laughs> Gladys! Oh, oh, Gladys! 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 Oh, My friend Bob. We work together for Professor Green. Well, he's a big uranium research man. I met him before in the reeds. A researching researcher. And then you had better luck than I. I was nearly shot. Hi there. That is, if the revolver had been loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and you? You here on a summer vacation? Hmm. Fine summer vacation. If we hadn't found this island, we wouldn't be here to tell the story. We crashed on our way to Singapore. Ah, then you're the American dance troupe that got lost. Yes. Well, how do you know that? Well, all the newspapers in the world have carried your story. Yeah. What? I'll bet Professor Green was surprised when all these girls showed up. Ha <laughs> ha. Professor Green is dead. What's with the professor? Dead? What? He was hanging in a huge spider web. That's how we found him. Mm -hmm. Linda is dead, and Gary, our manager, has also disappeared. Spider web? Do you really believe that? By the way, our ship is coming back in two days. We must radio information right away so that they can send an agent to clear the matter up. You mean it? A ship's coming by? Our expedition ship. Then it will take us with it? Yeah, of course. We're oh, rescued. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You've lost the urge to experiment. Every time you touch me, I go out of my mind. Let me die. Let me die. Her brain kept alive by experimental science by a man whose abnormal passions inspired him to try the impossible.
brought her back. She'll live and I'll get her another body. Yes, and what of her soul? How can you make of her an experiment of horror? His mad ambitions and desires threaten every woman possessing an attractive body. Girls whose measurements make them beauty contest participants. Professional figure models such as this. All are prey to his distorted desires. What's locked behind that door? Horror. No normal mind can imagine. Something even more terrible than you. Horror has its ultimate. And I'm that. Behind that door is the sum total of Dr. Cordner's mistakes. He intends to kill somebody. To rob them of their body. We've got to stop him. As Horrors of Spider Island continues, the ladies are celebrating their imminent rescue with a costume party. Well, I, I should say a lack of costume party. Look, isn't this pretty? The boys uh, will be surprised when they see how we've dressed ourselves up in our island costumes. <laughs> 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 and they promised us real whiskey, kids. I can hardly wait. Hold this. Shall I put this in my hair? You look great, just like a real islander. <laughs> well, I am. Haven't I been here for four weeks? I can't believe that we'll be back in New York in a couple of days. When we tell them at home what has happened to us, nobody's going to believe us. Where, George and Ann? Outside on the veranda. They're out there with Joe, trying to make radio contact with the expedition ship. I wonder if a lot of reporters will be on board when we get there. Hope so. Uh huh. What's important for me is that Jimmy's there. Who is Jimmy? My friend. We're going to be married. What if he's got eyes for another? You don't believe that yourself. I'd scratch his eyes out. And he knows it. Oh, kids, we made radio contact with the ship and we'll be picked up tomorrow. And tonight we'll dance and really raise the room. <laughs> Usually quiet and one of the nicest. She's away from home for the first time. Her folks live in Minnesota. I've never seen her so relaxed. I'd like to dance with her. Mm -hmm. How about the house? Not in the house. Some place where we'll be all alone. You know what? We'll meet at the lagoon. Okay. But so that no one will notice. Good. We'll meet in 15 minutes on the trail down to the water. All set? Of course. Mm. Uh, but be on time. I hate waiting. Have 
a good time with the chicks? Shut your mouth. Falling for her? quiet. You know, when you've lived on islands for a long time, you forget how to say nice things to girls. We'll try it once. Well, I'm really glad that your airplane crashed. Well, that's a nice thing to say. I mean, I mean, otherwise I wouldn't have gotten to know you. And, and I'm glad about that. Oh, you say that to everybody. No, Anne. I don't know any girls. When I think of the ones I do, I'd rather work. Well, I must say, you certainly are a master at paying compliments. Perhaps you're... Perhaps you're right. I should pay more attention to young women. Sometimes I envy Bob. He's so uninhibited and carefree. Bob, any girl is good enough for him. A real man is interested in only one girl. Then I'm a... But I'm a real man. How? Because I'm really interested only in one girl. Who's that? What does she look like? Cute? Elegant? Elegant? Mm, on the contrary. A little bit disheveled and neglected. But uh, very pretty. <laughs> Her name's Anne. Oh, Joe. That's one of the nicest things that's ever been said to me. Well, I meant it. I'm really fond of you. You know, when you leave for New York, here, so you won't forget me too quickly. But, Joe, please don't let me wait too long. Come on, I got 12 minutes left. What's in 12 minutes? My next rendezvous. Um. Be darned. That's not bad either. Hey, all right. You really don't know where to start here. on your mind, huh? Nothing. In love? 
Mm-hmm. And do you really think that Bobby's the right man for you? <laughs> I don't know. I only know one thing. I love him. I hope he doesn't let you down. I'd be very sorry for you. Hello, daddy -o. How about throwing those lamps on somebody else for a change? Yeah, baby. I'd like you swing, too. Gladys, it's not worth it. Don't bother me. <laughs> hey, Georgia, give me a drink, too. All right. Thanks. Bobby. Yeah? Do you have to turn all the girls' heads? Who, me? They turn mine. He doesn't seem quite so bad now, does he? Where'd he go, anyway? We'll be right back. Feed me! Oh, take it easy, Dracula. What do you think I'm carrying here, my dirty laundry? Where a man-eating talking plant gives homicide something to think about. And I didn't do it. Do what? Whatever. Ever see this man? Man, see picture. Why are you so nervous? Oh, boy, you kiss good, Audrey. Oh, I guess I just have a good kiss, sir. Now you will do as I say. Yes, master. You will go out and find me some food. Yes, master. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Too bony. Too bony? Nobody ever told me that before. Beef is better than veal. Ah, you're such a dodo. What do you call this? Chopped liver? <laughs> Now back to Horrors of Spider Island, where Bobby the Walking Canker Sore shows he may actually have some semi-human feelings. Maybe. Hi, Georgia. Hi. That dance sure made me thirsty. <laughs> Georgia, aren't you at all excited about going home soon? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's drink the night. Yes. Well, here's to the trip. Cheers. Cheers. Do you think people are still talking about us? Of course. Now all the more, since we found you. Will the papers print our story? Oh, baby. Will the papers print your story? The magazines will carry your pictures. And what do you think radio and TV will do with you? You'll be amazed at the reception you get back in New York. Maybe they'll drive us down Broadway with confetti and all. Hmm. In any case, you become a world-famous troupe. And hmm, who knows? Maybe you'll wind up in Hollywood. Oh, Bobby, I might make it yet. Thank goodness I still have a few minutes left. Because my next rendezvous is very important. And this time, who's the lucky one? If you won't tell anyone, Gladys. Bobby. Hmm? Gladys is a fine girl. Up until now, she's been shy of men. Please, leave her alone. Exactly. I've always yearned for a girl like this. Never found one. Why am I telling you all this anyway? Oh, Joe, I'm so happy. Well, that's what I expected. Same old story. You're nice to a man, and before you know it, he's getting thrashed. <laughs> Anne, I must tell you something right away. Come on. Okay. Hey, Anne. Let her on. 
They're all good for nothing. They're all the same. Come on, let's have a drink. Well, Gladys, it's just as I told you earlier. Well, don't you see that Bob is just the kind of man who wants nothing else than to play around with women without a single serious thought in his head? You're right. I don't want to see him again. Gladys. Look, Bob. You can keep those remarks about Anne to yourself. Get it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you're serious, fella. You haven't fallen for that little broad by any chance. Well, good luck, Fem. And what if I were? Then I'd feel sorry for you. What are dancers? Hot goods for cold nights. Or do you think your Anne is different? Hmm? For a guy like you, the worst girl in the world is too good. No, let's go inside and fight so we can break things. I gotta run. I gotta date. Okay. your best friend would be safe with you around. Are you talking about Bobby? Who else? But you can keep him. I'm through with him. I've got news for you. Bobby just made it clear to me that you're the kind of girl that he's been looking for. Do you mean that, Babs? If it weren't true, do you think I'd leave him? Babs! Go to him. He's waiting for you.
On behalf of all of us watching tonight, thank you, Spider Guy. Good job. by no earthly law, possessing weird and enormous powers, these strange teenagers from outer space invade the Earth and prepare to possess its women. Nothing can stop their deadly advance. Earthmen are no match for their superhuman powers. They blast the flesh off humans. A moment before, she was a beautiful young girl. Now, she's a skeleton. trailers. I feel myself going back to the animal instinct. I lock myself in there with him. Really. exotic geisha houses of Tokyo, to the back alleys of the Ginza Strip, comes the terrifying news of a fiendish creature that threatens to destroy all who stand in his way. This is the frightening story of an American reporter in Tokyo who unwittingly became the victim of a shocking scientific experiment that turned him into a horrible mutant, half man, half monster, the Manster. He got away. I think I know where he's going, to Taurus. Follow me. Right. There's panic in the streets as the unheard of terror of a half-man, half-monster runs wild through the city. There he goes! Don't miss The Manster, a genuine thriller in the most frightening sense of the word. was a, a scream. They sounded like Gladys. And Bobby's also gone. I'll look for them. You get dressed and follow me.
this, I'll go back and get the ammunition. Quick! Bob, dead. Was he strangled? Where are the bullets? Oh. It's too late. He's here. position and open your minds wide. It's time for your cranial cavity search. Ah, uh, yes, my lords and ladies, the cranial cavity search. Here's a chance for you great geeks out there to prove your geek cred uh, by showing what you know. <laughs> and tonight's cranial cavity search question is... Boys from the city, not yet caught by the whirlwind of progress, feed soda pop to the thirsty pigs. That's almost a haiku, isn't it? Ha <laughs> ha! Anyway, my lords and ladies, from which weird old schlockfest do we get those almost poetic lines? Boys from the city, not yet caught by the whirlwind of progress, feed soda pop to the thirsty pigs. <laughs> A. Knight of the Ghouls. B. Curse of the Swamp Creature. C. The Killer Shrews. Or D. The Beast of Yucca Flats. Boys from the city not yet caught by the whirlwind of progress feed soda pop to the thirsty pigs. From where do we get those weird, weird lines? And how many weird lines are you about to hear in these commercials? And the answer to tonight's cranial cavity search question. Boys from the city, not yet caught by the whirlwind of progress, feed soda pop to the thirsty pigs. 
From which movie do we get those lines? It was D, The Beast of Yucca Flats. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, my lords and ladies, The Beast of Yucca Flats starred the mighty Tor Johnson as a nuclear scientist who is turned into a monster by, what else? A nuclear explosion. <laughs> uh, due to budgetary concerns, namely having almost no budget at all, the movie was shot silently, with sparse dialogue and stilted, ridiculous narration added later. <laughs> but now, on to the conclusion of Horrors of Spider Island, as Gary the Weir Spider has Georgia on his mind. That's a line from an old song, kids. Look it up. <laughs> through the bushes. The rest of you come with me. Nobody should go alone. Always go in pairs. Come on.
continue living. I think they missed a really good opportunity for a franchise here. I mean, maybe that wasn't the only mutant spider on the island, right? One could have sneaked aboard ship and gone back to civilization with them, bitten a whole bunch of people. Entire cities overrun by three-fanged, furry-faced weir spiders. Nah, let's leave bad enough alone. My lords and ladies, I want to thank you all for watching. And I want to invite you all back again next week when we'll do whatever this is all over again. Ha <laughs> ha! As always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, geek out.